is over? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. And this is a wonderful thing to still have some of the decorations before us to realize that although the event is complete, nevertheless, the spirit of Christmas continues to be in our hearts week after week, month after month. So feast your eyes one more time upon the beautiful assembly before us here in terms of the tree, the abbot the wreaths, the nativity scene here, and also in the narthex. They have been put away for another year, but not this year. Not this year. This morning, in addition to the regular liturgy that we sing, we are going to be singing the Kyrie and the hymn of praise at the beginning of the service. Beautiful me uh, melodies, Carrie will lead us. And so we begin our worship this morning by standing and singing praise be to Christ. Praise be to Christ in whom we see the image of the Father shown, the firstborn Son revealed and known, the truth and grace of deity, through whom creation came to birth, whose fingers set the stars in place, the unseen powers and this small earth, the furthest bounds of time and space. Praise be to him whose sovereign sway and will upholds creation's plan, who is before all worlds began, and when our world has passed away. Lord of the church, its life and head, redemption's price and source and theme, alive the firstborn from the dead, to reign as all in all supreme. Praise be to him who, Lord most high, the fullness of the Godhead shares, and yet our human nature bears, who came as man to bleed and die. And from his cross there flows our peace, who chose for us the path he trod, that so might sins and sorrows cease, and all be reconciled to God. Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search, you search us, us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of reason. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, sing with all the people of God, and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a wide, wild oaks. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flame 
The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temples all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the throne. The Lord sits enthroned as King Thor. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we, also, we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jordan's river came our Lord, the Christ whom heavenly hosts adored. To the God from God, the light from light, the Lord of glory, power, and might. The Savior came to be baptized, the Son of God in flesh disguised, to stand beneath the Father's will and all his righteousness fulfilled. 
as Jesus in the Jordan stood, and John baptized the Lamb of God, the Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, descended on him from above. Then from God's throne with thunderous sound came God's own voice with words profound. This is my son, was his decree, the one I love who pleases me. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied among us in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus was baptized. This must be pretty important because it's mentioned in all of the four Gospels. The Christmas story, which we are very familiar with, was only written in two, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. But the baptism of Jesus is written up in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They must have thought it was important. And perhaps also, so should we. Down through the centuries, artists have tried to capture this particular moment of Jesus being baptized by John at the Jordan River. Unfortunately, they didn't have any very much information by which they were able to tell us some of the things that we may be interested in. What was the weather like that day? Was Jesus any of Jesus' relatives present? If Mary was there, what was she wearing? And was this story covered by the, by, the, by the Jerusalem Times? Now these are tidbits that we will never know, but there are two outstanding things that we must remember. First of all, God publicly claimed Jesus as his very own. You are my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. These words echoing the words of the prophet Isaiah, which had been spoken many centuries before. I have called you by name. You are mine. And then secondly, God the Father empowered Jesus with the Holy Spirit. We read, And as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. Jesus' baptism was significant, and through it, God proclaimed claimed Jesus as his very own, and then empowered him for the ministry that was about to take place. And the good news for us this morning is that God continues to do the very same thing among you and me today. Through baptism, God claims us as his sons and his daughters. We belong to him. And through our baptism, God continues to empower us to lead a Christian life, to lead a life of discipleship. Some of you may say, whoa, whoa, just wait a minute here. My baptism was so long ago, I was but an infant. I was there, but I have no recollection of it whatsoever. I can't remember a thing. And unfortunately, we are not alone. To, to many people, however, baptism is simply an infant rite of passage. It's a photo op where everybody is smiling. It's hard to believe that there could be any real long-lasting significance after this particular rite, especially with regard to the struggles that we have to live out the Christian life day in and out. It may be really hard to believe that, but maybe it is important. First of all, through holy baptism, God claims us as his very own. We belong. But doesn't good old God have to claim everybody? No. Good old God doesn't have to claim anybody, including you or me. Why, well, I bet there are days that we don't even want to claim ourselves. 
We look at ourselves and our disposition and we become a bit discouraged. Considering some of our nasty habits, our, our slashing remarks, our temper outbursts, the basket of unfulfilled promises. Really, if there are days that we wouldn't even claim ourselves, why should God? But he does. In spite of ourselves, he loves us. He loves us for his name's sake. And because he loves us, he has given us his very own son to be our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. And he is also willing to back up all of the promises of baptism that take place throughout the New Testament. For example, St. <clears throat> Luke writes in the book of Acts, through the waters of baptism, we are washed of our sin. And then in the, the, the second lesson that was read moments ago, Baptism joins us to the death and resurrection of Christ. And then St. Paul writes to Titus and says, Baptism gives us new birth and new life. And to the Galatians, Paul wrote, Through baptism we become part of God's family. The beat goes on. I don't know what your boss thinks about you or your kids or your mother-in-law, but I know what God thinks of you. He loves you. He loves you then through baptism. God wishes to be able to claim you as his own. He wants you to know that you belong. And those ancient words of Isaiah should continue to ring in our ears and in our hearts. I have called you by name. You are mine. And then secondly, through baptism, God empowers us for discipleship. To be able to lead the Christian life as each and every one of us desperately wishes to accomplish. We want to be able to do this because through our baptism, we wish to become followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if on the one hand we admit, we admit that it was important that Jesus was baptized, and the other we realize that our own personal baptism is somewhere off the radar, how are we able to bring this back into sharper focus and make it something more significant in our lives? I have three suggestions. Number one, identify your baptismal date. Identify your baptismal date. I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. Please raise your hands if you know your birthday. Please raise your hands, especially husbands, raise your hands if you know your wedding anniversary. <laughs> raise your hands if you know your baptismal date. Now, if you're among those who say, I know my date of birth, I know my wedding anniversary, but I really don't remember the date of my baptism, you are certainly not alone. But the vast majority of us may claim, you know, really now, that was when I was just an infant, as was said before, point taken. But you can find out, and I encourage you to do so. After all, if we are willing to celebrate the date of our birth into this world, why can't we celebrate the date of our rebirth into the kingdom of God? If you have baptismal documents at home, search them out. Search them out. And if you have trouble finding those documents and you know that the church records here have them, Mary has promised me that she would be able to work with you to be able to discover them. Get those dates, remember them, and keep them before you forever. <laughs> I have three boys in my confirmation class who have memorized their baptismal dates. If these three eighth graders can do it, you can too. Secondly, celebrate your baptismal date. Celebrate your baptismal anniversary even as you celebrate each year your date of birth. And here's where you parents, and sometimes godparents, play a very special role. When you were first parents, your children had just been born, you were being considered to be the best parent possible. And so you went down and had the heel prick, the hepatitis vaccine, the antibiotic, the vitamin K injection, the baptism. Check, check, check. All done. And I commend you for being such good parents. 
But baptism is not just one item on a checklist. It is rather an opportunity to realize that it is a long, it's a lifelong process, which is first begun at the time of our baptism. And just as we as parents and godparents are happy to celebrate the anniversary of a child's birth, so often we should also be willing to help celebrate the anniversary of baptism. I phoned each of my children and grandchildren <clears throat> on the anniversary of their baptism. Not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm a father and a grandfather. And I have no doubt that some of my grandchildren roll their eyes and say, here goes Gramps again. <laughs> but I do believe that I want to have the opportunity to remind them that God once claimed them as his very own through baptism, and that God is going to be with them throughout their circumstances during life. If I can do it, I suggest you do it as well. Finally, remember that through your baptism, you have the beginning of Christian discipleship, walking in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many times we're able to say that we are struggling with issues that we never thought we would ever have to encounter. Life today is certainly far more of a struggle, far more of a fast-paced, decision-making thing than it ever was 10 or even 20 years ago. My goodness, the number of concerns that are medical, financial, social, political, the list goes on. Who's going to help us see our way through this maze? Where will we find a moral compass? Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Because of baptism, you are a beloved child of God. He loves you, always has, always will. God loved you enough to send his son into this world to be able to live life as we live it but then even more so to give his life on the cross that we may enjoy life on a totally different level, now here in time and hereafter in eternity. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You belong to him forever. So permit this old preacher this morning to remind you of three suggestions that you may want to consider. Identify your baptismal date. Celebrate your baptismal anniversary. Remember that your life of Christian discipleship began with your baptism. And so, Alice and Albert, Barbara and Bob, uh, Claire and, and Charlie, remember you were once baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of our Lord, the peace that surpasses our understanding and which we so desperately need, that this peace might come upon us through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I encourage you to join me together with saints throughout the world as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand.
prayers we have. Several special requests today. We have a prayer on behalf of a prepper, Dave Thompson, as he begins chemotherapy treatments for leukemia this week. We are praying for George Strop, Donna Dalalo's brother. Prayers as he continues to recover in the Bridgeport Hospital from cardiac issues. Regret to be able to indicate that Cynthia Bonazzoli, a close relative of the Roman family, has also has died. And also Bob Hansen, brother of Audrey Perre, and husband of Mickey Hansen, former member of Holy Cross, has also died. So we wish to be able to remember these people as they have lost beloved members of their families. We pray for them that their comfort might be the knowledge of God's love for them in Jesus Christ and the promises that are theirs. However, we also wish, <coughs> wish to rejoice on behalf of, of prayer of thanksgiving, on behalf of Nancy and Jerry Soul for their 50th wedding anniversary uh, on January the 9th, yesterday. So we rejoice with them. With these thoughts in mind and others, let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this worship time together. We have once again heard your word and sung your praise. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that when we leave church this morning, we can be determined to put everything we have learned into practice. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Your Heavenly Father, as we celebrate Jesus' baptism, Help us to daily remember our own. Help us to remember thereby that we are your children and that you will empower us to live a Christian life. Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord of the church, we thank you for the varied ministries at Holy Cross, worship, education, outreach, missions, service, every ministry that reflects your will. Grant that these ministries and the men and women who lead them might be strengthened by your spirit to joyfully accomplish your purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, our country faces so many serious problems at the moment. The political atmosphere is toxic. Help us, Lord, to listen to one another, perhaps even to learn from one another, so that we might truly become what we pledge, one nation, under God. Bless all duly elected men and women in Washington, in Hartford, in Trumbull. Bless all of these men and women with wisdom, vision, and courage so that they may fulfill their duties accordance to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we remember those persons who are sick, alone, troubled, or distant from us. We remember those individuals mentioned before, as well as these in our bulletin. Myrtle, Lisa, Jace, Bob, Roberta, Ron, Jim, Joanne, Martha, Barbara, Anita, Charlie, Monica, Rick, the homebound who are Thomasina, Edna, Robert, Effie, together with the men and women who serve in the, in the armed forces. We pray that we would then grant all such persons health in body, mind, and spirit, and enable them to experience the peace that you alone are able to provide. We also thank you for the medically trained men and women who continue to serve COVID patients at their own risk. Even though weary, they continue to serve us. Keep them safe from infection, and bless the work of those who continue to provide the vaccine to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Truly good, right, salutary.
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what has been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations of your Son. And your son. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Oh, holy, singing. holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Most God in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Most God in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent, your only begotten Son, into the flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We turn to one another and exchange the peace of the Lord. Just a brief note about our communion hymn, um, because it can be confusing if you don't read a lot of music. We will sing together the first four lines, and that is stanza one, and then we will go back to the beginning and start with stanza two. Clear as mud? <laughs> Follow me. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in I bind this day unto me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his cross of death for my salvation is bursting from the spiced tomb, is riding up the heavenly way, is coming at the day of doom. 
whom I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead is I to watch its might to stay is ear to hearken to my need the wisdom of my God to teach his hand to guide his shield to ward the word of God to give me speech his heavenly host to be my God I bind unto myself the name the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Take and eat the body of our Lord. Take and drink the blood of our Lord. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve us steadfast in that true faith under Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Stand and we sing the post community canon. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. all his children to his family through his son father giving his salvation life forever has been won little children come to me for my kingdom is of thee Life and love I have to give Mercy for your sin Father welcomes all his children To his family through his son Father giving his salvation Life forever has been won in the water in the word in his promise be assured those who are baptized and believe shall be born again father welcomes all his children to his family through his son father giving his salvation life forever has been won let us daily die to sin let us daily rise with him. Walk in the love of Christ our Lord. Live in the peace of God. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Congregation, please be seated. What announcements may we have today? So I don't have any church business here today for you, but today's a special day because the Lord has blessed the Sables with 50 years of marriage, as you heard in our, uh, in our uh, prayers. So let's all... <laughs> Nancy and Jerry, we can't mingle around and have a big party. The best we can do is give you virtual hugs and express our love with an applause. So from all of us, there you go. That's all I have. <laughs> Other announcements? Oh, I have one. Oh, oh here, settle. There you go. Hang on. Let me get out of your way. Sorry. Apologies. It's also a special day because we are undecorating the church. And so we'll be taking down the tree and the wreaths and the um, and then and then the crush. So the you have such a nice soft voice. We have to use the other mic. This mic? Is this good? Okay. No, this one. This one? Yep. Okay. Well, 
Church on decorating. That's Say it again. Church on decorating. I hate you. <laughs> Don't make me yell. Any, anything else? Eat it, you would have to announce a couple of flowers. 